Do you ever feel like you're the one telling your Meniere's doctor how to treat you? And what I mean is, does it feel like you're asking the doctor, hey, what if we do this kind of diet? What about this supplement? What about this test? And what they're giving you is, well, you know, we have steroids, we have beta histine, we have a diuretic, uh, we have low sodium diet, and that's it. If you're feeling like you're the one bringing the ideas to the table, don't be too harsh on the ENT, and here's why. Because they're basically working in a box, and that box is they're in an insurance model. And the insurance model, believe it or not, changes how doctors think. Basically, whatever insurance doesn't pay for, you're not going to find your doctor probably recommending or knowing anything about. I don't think it's because they don't want to help you. It's because, number one, they don't have time. They only have maybe 10 minutes to see you and to talk to you. And they have some tools that do work for some people. And what are they? Well, I just mentioned them. First thing they're always going to do, almost always, is give you some kind of course of prednisone. And prednisone's great because it is a, an immune system kind of squasher, right? So if you have Meniere's disease, right, and your symptoms aren't going away, and you go to the ENT and they give you prednisone and your symptoms get better for a while, fantastic. Now, the problem is, if those symptoms come back, you can't just continually take prednisone. So they may also, at that time, uh, when you first see them, they re may recommend a diuretic, right? So the idea behind the diuretic is, is that it's going to reduce fluid retention because in Meniere's, one of the things that we think about is we think about it's a collection of fluid in the inner ear and there's no place for it to go, right? It's just filling up and there's pressure and you're crushing your inner ear from the inside out. And diuretics do work for some time. I've just had a patient the other day that she has Meniere's disease. The diuretic has done nothing for her, but her mom has Meniere's disease and the diuretic was like a lifesaver for her. So that does work for some people. So if you're having to bring ideas back to the table, it means that something's not working, right? It means that your Meniere's is probably not stable and you're trying to find something else to do. The problem is the person you're working with only has a certain set of tools, right? What they've got is they've got the steroids, they got the diuretic, maybe they'll prescribe beta histine. I mean, I've made a bit video on beta histine before. It might work a little bit. It doesn't seem to really do that much, at least for the people that make it to me, but of course there's some selection bias there. And then they have, you know, the low sodium diet, which I think everybody should be doing if you've got Meniere's disease, because it, it's, a, it's a very easy win. And then after that, they kind of say, well, you know, we maybe could do steroid injections in your ear. And after that, maybe we'll have to do surgery, right? Like getting a shunt or uh, blocking a canal or doing some kind of resection or something. So I realize how frustrating it is when you feel like you're the doctor, right? But you have to understand, again, that's not their training typically. They really don't know that much beyond you know, that uh, steroids could work, diuretic could work. And I'm not blaming any of them. I'm just saying that's kind of the box that they're living in. They're sort of handcuffed because a lot of them, I think, they don't really stay up to date on what Meniere's research is showing us about how it's connected to the immune system. They certainly aren't doing anything treatment-wise, usually with, with related to diet, unless it's low sodium. They're not looking at the different types of supplementation can, you can do. They're not looking at multiple tissue antibody testing. Right? They're not looking at lymphocyte immunophenotyping testing, and mainly they're not doing that because insurance is not going to pay for it. And if insurance isn't going to pay for it, it never really makes its way into their daily practice. It doesn't make its way into how, uh, how they treat Meniere's patients and how they work them up. So again, don't throw them under the bus. What you need to do, though, is you need to be working with someone who can be your doctor, right? Someone that understands all these issues we've been talking about understands about how there is autoimmunity in a significant number of uh, Meniere's patients. It's not necessarily ear autoimmunity, but they have an autoimmune problem outside their ear, and it's the inflammatory consequences of that that is causing the manifestation and the instability in their Meniere's process, right? Just remember, the vast majority of people, I mean the vast majority of people, and certainly almost all the people that make it to me, uh, their Meniere's has some sort of immune system component. And some of these people have taken steroids, and it has helped temporarily. Some of these people have taken steroids and it didn't help. Now, that doesn't mean that their immune system can't be helped. It just means there's other ways to do that. And you're gonna have to work with someone and find someone that knows what those things are, right? That's staying current, staying modern, has a lot of experience treating these people. I would also recommend you find someone that understands, of course, I mentioned that multiple tissue antibody testing, but also someone that understands about how lymphocyte immunophenotyping can be extremely helpful. Uh, basically, that's a test that lets us kind of drill down, kind of look under the hood and see what's going on with this person's T cells, B cells, natural killer cells. It's kind of like getting your immune system fingerprinted, right? I've given lots of examples over the many videos on my channel, but it's really important to find out what is your immune system doing in your Meniere's disease. Because just because I have 100 people with Meniere's disease, I can almost guarantee you that they're all going to have their own phenotype on the testing, right? 
And that's important for treatment because yes, they could all have immune system involvement, but there's so many different permutations of that, right? And combinations of that. A phenotype just means what something looks like. I always tell people it's like this, you know, we've all got eyes and ears and hands and that kind of stuff, but we've all got our own fingerprint. And that's the way the immune system is too. Even in Meniere's disease, we all may have T cells and B cells and all that kind of stuff, but how they're arranged and what's high and what's low, that's very individualized and it matters for treatment because the doctor doesn't have to like guess what's happening. It doesn't have to treat something you don't have and you don't have to just like try to squash everything with steroids. You can be more specific. And I have different case studies about how, how I've done that. And I just think it's really important that if you're feeling like you're the doctor, right? You need to find someone who can be the doctor. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the ENT. They absolutely have a role. They absolutely are important, but there's only a few things they're going to be able to do. So don't, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't beat up on them too bad. Okay. So anyway, I hope you guys found that helpful. I hope you understand kind of what to be looking for and how to understand why your ENT may not be able to help you as much as you want them to, because they only have a limited uh, number of tools. So uh, talk to you guys soon. Hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.